Hello YouTubers, it is a beautiful day and the perfect time to learn something new. What the parasites? Let's take an in-depth look at parasitic infection and worms. Affect you? It's simple. Your immune system is directly related to the condition of your intestines as well as your body's ability to absorb nutrients from food during digestion. Toxemia is the cause of all disease. The United States Health and Human Services has admitted several years ago that over 90% of Americans are walking around with clogged colons. Autotoxemia, auto meaning self-caused, is the real culprit in almost all diseases and degenerative conditions. Dr. John Tilden, during the 1930s, in his book Toxemia Explained, the true interpretation of the cause of disease, presented the concept that toxins were the only cause of disease. If you deal with toxemia now, you won't age anywhere as quickly as you normally would. And you won't go through all the aches, pains, and illnesses that your friends and parents have gone through. through pre that is very interesting information to me. You won't go through all the diseases, pains, and aches that your, your family and your friends do. Just because you make sure that you are constantly um, detoxing. So, an important question, how many people actually do a stool sample as part of their testing when something goes wrong? And did your healthcare provider specifically test for parasites, blood work specific to finding and looking for parasites or worms? Parasites can be subtle, and you don't need to travel to the jungle to become infected with a parasite. Simply going to the park or hiking in the woods can be enough. Few doctors can recognize common symptoms or problems as parasitic infections. Doctors will also need lab tests and exposure histories to find these sneaky parasites. However, not all doctors are trained to look for parasites. Infectious disease specialists are best qualified to diagnose and treat these conditions. So let me repeat. Most medical doctors, primary care physicians, family practitioners, OBGYNs, and even ER doctors are not trained to look for parasites. If you are trusting in modern medicine to identify and diagnose you for parasites or a parasitic worm, you need to see an infectious disease specialist. Otherwise, you can also get a muscle testing parasite screen. Also, it is very important to note that even if you give a stool sample to the lab and were given a negative result such as this, it does not mean you don't have parasites. It only means that the time the stool sample was viewed under a microscope that no eggs or parasites were viewed in that particular stool sample by that particular lab person. So they are looking through a microscope with their naked eye in order to view whether or not they see any eggs or parasites. This is extremely unreliable and not a very good way of testing for something that is so common and easily spread. Basically, anyone with small children or around small children are at risk for inf infection or already have a persistent infection. Most people with a strong immune system are able to fight off most parasites, but anyone who has a weakened immune system is susceptible to infections. Those who are on certain medications, sleep deprived, anxious, stressed, malnourished, dehydrated, constipated, depressed, or have feelings of being unloved are more prone to having a weakened immune system and therefore are more likely to infection and repeat infection. Those who eat high amounts of animal protein, dairy, sugar, and empty carbohydrates feed the parasitic infection directly. If you already have an infestation, you are more susceptible to being infected by other types of species. So let's take a look at this website to get a better understanding. This is diagnoseme.com. Infection by intestinal parasite worms is widespread throughout the world, affecting hundreds of millions of people. Children are particularly susceptible and typically have the largest number of worms. Three of the most common kinds of worms are roundworm, whipworm, and hookworm. 
These worms live in the intestines and their numbers build up through repeat infection. It is possible to be infected with more than one kind of worm. A parasite survives by hijacking another organism, robbing it of nutrients, and thanking it by leaving behind toxic waste. Obviously, we would be much happier without these pin-sized freeloaders around. Yet, there are over a hundred different types of parasites that can live in human hosts. Since the world's population is becoming more mobile, meaning more people are traveling to foreign countries and people from foreign countries are traveling to the United States, Parasitic infections are increasing. The fact is, parasitic infections may have reached epidemic levels in the U.S. and most other countries. And this website does co cover the types of parasites, and I will put this in the description of the video if you want to look at them for yourself. Worms are prolific little creatures. They can release tens of thousands of eggs at a time, and it's the eggs or the freshly hatched larvae that we inadvertently pick up as we, talk, as we walk barefoot or garden in infected soil. Parasitic infection may spread through contaminated water, fruits, vegetables, grains, poultry, fish, or meat. Parasites, in addition, can be transferred from pet to owner. Since children spend more times outdoors, they are more likely than adults to be exposed to parasites. People become infected with intestinal worms through contact with soil that has been contaminated with human feces from an infected person. In the case of roundworm and whipworm, people become infected when they ingest the worm eggs, either by eating contaminated food, for example, fruits or vegetables that have been watered with water containing contaminated soil, or by geographic activity, by ingesting contaminated soil directly. People become infected with hookworm when the larvae burrow through the skin of bare feet. Now, it is also important to note that a lot of small children love to eat dirt. They will eat the dirt, become infected, and then inadvertently affect or infect you. Signs and symptoms. And we, I do cover quite a bit of these throughout the video. And you can go to this website if you want to see more. It doesn't take Stone Age sanitation habits or a lengthy trip exploring dense jungles to increase parasitic infection risks. Parasites are almost everywhere, yet many medical doctors hesitate to diagnose parasitic infection and won't treat the infection unless symptoms are serious. Even though we've had had to deal with parasites, doctors have found that patients don't want to hear about them. And it's just as well, the drugs most phys physicians use against parasitic infection work on the premise of differential toxicity, which means that the drug is hopefully more toxic to the parasite than to us. So when physicians prescribe a, a drug to treat your parasitic infection, most often it comes with a huge amount of side effects that actually make your situation worse and re don't really work. So once you become, once you're able to rid yourself of these parasitic infections, this website also covers present, preventing reinfection. And then let's just cover really quickly complications. As worms population build up over time, many of the health problems caused by these worms become chronic. These worms can cause malnutrition as they rob the body of food, either by reducing appetite or by preventing food from being absorbed properly once it has been eaten. Children with chronic worm infections and large numbers of worms may become stunted and overweight. I do apologize for the noise in the background, if you can hear it. Heavy infections with roundworm can cause bowel obstruction, so the actual infection itself causes an obstruction with the fecal matter. Intestinal worms, especially hookworm, can contribute to anemia by causing intestinal bleeding and thus loss of blood. The number of worms... The larger the number of worms, the more likely they are to make a person ill. Chronic infections can lead to long-term retardation of mental and physical development and in very severe infections, even death. The long-term presence of parasites may contribute to the, to the development of food allergies, which is a lot, a lot of people really overlook this. They will develop an allergy that they've never had before in their life. And they don't understand all of a sudden why they are allergic to it. And it could be because they have parasites in their intestines. So let's go ahead and look over some major signs that you could have a parasitic infection. Immune disorder, sleep disorders, teeth grinding, skin problems, irritable bowel syndrome, stomach disorders, diarrhea, body aches, chronic fatigue, sudden food sensitivities, anemia. 
iron deficiency, excessive number of bacterial or viral infections, excessive weight gain or excessive weight loss, restless anxiety, itching of the ears, nose, and anus, forgetfulness, slow thought process, excessive eating but continue to feel hungry, or alternately loss of appetite, Lethar lethargy, drooling during sleep, problems with menstrual cycles, and numb hands. So I do want to show this parasitic before and after video. Let's see here. She explains before parasitic cleanse, extremely bloated, fatigued, and constipated. And she shows a picture. She said she has no energy. You can see it looks pretty round here. And then it says after parasitic cleanse, no more bloating, even after a meal, digestive system working, and increased energy. My son's trying to copy me. And as you can see, her stomach does not look the same at all. It has changed quite a bit in the size and the appearance of it. It looks like her stomach has melted away and her intestin intestinal inflammation has decreased. And I'm sure gas and water retention was reduced as well. In her video, she explains how her symptoms just came out of nowhere before the parasitic cleanse and then discusses how she would look six months pregnant after she ate anything it didn't matter what she ate she said her stomach and bowels would bloat and make her belly look round like she was six months pregnant then she explains what she did to rid herself of the parasites and how she's been feeling since she has done this and gotten rid of the little creatures she also explains how she would often have cravings for sugar and her blood sugar problem, blood, blood sugar levels would fluctuate before the parasitic cleanse. And so this is Carleen. I'm not going to butcher your last name. During my personal struggle with cleansing, I personally felt weak, lightheaded, and foggy when I didn't eat sugar. I would get a craving for something sweet. And if I didn't eat sugar, something sugary within an hour of that craving, I would start to feel woozy, like I was going to faint. So that was one of my main main um, symptoms that I knew that I had something going on that was more than, than what modern medicine could provide for me. So symptoms of late stage hookworm infestation are an enlarged abdomen and diarrhea. Worms can live up to 15 years in the human body. And females can lay 10,000 to 25,000 eggs every day. In severe cases, the number of parasites may grow so large that the intestines become blocked by the parasites themselves. Some infections cause specific complications, such as ambibiasis, which affects the liver, lungs, and brain. Parasites migrating through the lungs may cause difficulty breathing, and hookworm infestation can cause anemia and malnutrition, which, like I've said before, can affect growth and development in children. If you eat the standard American diet, your body is already malnourished and deficient, and the parasitic infection is only making it worse. Basically, they are sucking you dry causing havoc on every system in your body and overburdening it with toxins, making you feel foggy, distracted, tired, hungry, depressed, easily angered, anxious, useless, sore, achy, stiff, constant headaches, back pain, hip pain, tailbone pain, sacral pain, pain in, that radiates from your mid-back down to your ankles and feet, restless leg syndrome, waking up feeling stiff and tired, loss of hand coordination, skin rashes, eczema, food intolerance, certain foods like garlic may make you feel queasy when they never did before, infertility, low sex drive, painful sex, just a sense of feeling unwell or general feeling of something being off or not right, and hormone imbalance. These common but ignored symptoms are major signs of paraphytic Parasitic infection, heart pain, numb hands, pain in the navel, pain in the navel, sorry, pain in the back, thighs, or shoulders, arthritic pains, burning in the stomach, bedwetting, any menstrual complaints, cysts and fibroids, eating more and still being hungry, all skin problems, forgetfulness, chronic fatigue, chronic viral syndromes, 
water retention, crawling feeling under the skin, floaters in the eyes, liver and gallbladder trouble, ear ringing, hearing loss, reoccurring bladder issues, chronic kidney problems, difficulty concentrating, suicidal thoughts, uncontrolled emotions, feelings of confusion over life, feelings of seeking spirituality and autoimmune disease. If you suspect you may have intestinal parasites or a parasitic worm, then tell your doctor and ask them to run tests specific to parasites. Ask to see an infectious disease specialist. Be prepared to explain your lifestyle so that you can better tell the specialist and you can decide together which tests to run and start from there and go down the list. If you are shy, have someone go with you who will help you speak up and ask. During my research, I came across a blog and I wanted to quickly read this comment. She explains how she is seeing someone from UCSF GI department and she worries that they aren't hearing her concerns. I don't sleep at night due to quote unquote activity. So she can literally feel the intestinal worms or intestinal parasites moving throughout her digestive system and it is keeping her up at night. Important things to know about parasites. Dr. Brooks claims that eggs are readily transported through the air and it is not uncommon to find them in every room in the house. Complications are much more common in women than in men. Always wash or peel fruits and vegetables. Raw fruits and vegetables can be a bigger source of parasites than meat. Wash everything in hydrogen or food grade hydrogen peroxide to avoid contamination. Also, do not allow yourself to remain constipated. If your bowels do not move at least two to three times a day, read up on constipation remedies. Diagnosis causes relief and treatments. The longer your feces stays in your digestive tract, the greater a chance you have for parasites to grow. Little fact for you. Tapeworms can grow as long as 60 feet while living in the human intestines. And also, a fun fact, one of the most common parasites to infect human beings is the yeast-like blastocystis, a single-celled parasitic organism that causes abdominal cramping, bloating, gas, and sometimes anal itching. All right, so con to conclude, until one has diligently rid themselves of intestinal worms, parasites, or other organisms that work the same in copious amounts such as yeast overgrowth, the extended gestational pregnancy you think you are experiencing could be a parasitic infection. The movement and symptoms you are experiencing could be your body's reaction to being a host or becoming a host to this creature. A lab result stating no ova or parasite seen such as this is not sufficient enough to rule out this very, very likely possibility. Like I stated earlier, most medical doctors, primary care physicians, family practitioners, OBGYNs, and even ER doctors are not trained to look for parasites. If you are trusting in modern medicine to identify and diagnose you for parasites, you need to request and see an infectious disease specialist. I personally suggest you take your own health into your hands and heal your body using a holistic and natural approach and I will be making videos on how to do that soon all in good time in the meantime I will include a few videos in my description of this video explaining how you can get started with coffee enemas colon cleanses juice cleanses and much more so thank you guys for watching I hope this video isn't too long if you made it to the end woohoo I hope you have a great day happy learning and be well bye